Hey, peace and love, Islam. No, just kidding. What's up, guys? How you doing? It's uh, Artie's Corporate Fiction, and tonight we have a awesome show. It's uh, you know lawyer uh, discussing sovereign citizens with other lawyers, and uh, tonight you know we got uh, Joseph Palmetto, who is an attorney over in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, he's got his own channel, so definitely check check out his uh, channel. I have a link in the description and uh for you to look at um i was uh referenced uh by van ballion uh who pointed me out to one of his videos and today we're just going to talk about you know sovereign citizens in general like you know how we discovered them and you know how we as attorneys how our perspectives are uh when it comes to this movement so Joe, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, we can get started. Hi, I'm Joe Palmetto. I'm a criminal defense attorney out of Pittsburgh. Uh, I do have my own show, The Joe Palmetto Law Show. Uh, take, a take a second and check that out. Um, I'm very grateful that Artrexis uh, invited me onto his show to discuss this topic. Um, we do have that mutual connection through Van, ba Van, ba Van Bayon. Um, I want to pronounce that L. Uh, but I'm happy to be here. Uh, we're gonna, like, like uh, our Trex has said, we're gonna talk about, um, you know, our perspective as attorneys. We learn the law, we study the law, and we see these uh, sovereign citizens, sovereign citizens talking about the law in sort of their own fictional way. So we have some opinions on that, as you may believe. So um, as you know, uh, we talked about it off. Uh, off stream, uh, you said that you were kind of new to this whole thing. And I think one of the things that I, I was curious about is, you know, how did you find out about this movement? And, you know, can you give us an example of what you've experienced firsthand as far as sovereign citizens go? Sure. So I graduated law school in 2013. And uh, like I said, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I work for the public defender's office, and I also work for uh, the Office of Conflict Counsel, which is like the public defender's office. So we represent uh, people who fall below a certain income line, can't afford defense attorneys. So I was at court. I was in a law. I was a law student, and there were uh, these these guys. I've only seen a handful of them in my time, but there were these guys called sovereign citizens who were uh, rejecting our representation of them. They're like, we don't want public defenders. We don't want public defenders. And I'm, I'm new, and I'm like, what's going on here? And I ask a senior attorney, and he's like, oh, these guys, you know, they don't believe the law applies to them, blah, blah, blah. So I seen a couple of them go before judges, and <laughs> most, of the, most of the stuff I saw, it was kind of entertaining from the perspective that they were there on minor offenses. Some of them may have been in jail and some of them weren't. And they would get into their sovereign citizen shtick. And then the district attorney and the judge would be like, look, we're offering you, you know, a plea to a lesser offense. You'll be hit with a fine. You can go home today. And most of the time, boom, they would just take it. So they changed their tune as soon as a good offer, a good plea offer was made to them that was going to get them out of jail. So I, I that saw is, that. I, it's funny you say – it's funny, when, I, when I, I laugh when you mention that to me because it's like you don't see that in the videos, in the courtroom audio. Uh, mm -hmm. You always see them you know, making their defiant stands against the government, but you never see them end up taking the plea deal uh, when, it, when it suits them, huh? I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes, but absolutely. I don't know if that makes for good uh, video. Maybe we need to find some of those. Um, so, uh, and to give you mine, and, and I think, I don't know if I've told my audience this, you know, I haven't seen it firsthand, at least as in, in person in the courtroom, where my, where I got my first taste of sovereign citizens, it's usually uh, with my work with filings. Um, you know, I work for an agency and what I get is our complaints from the general public and every, and um, one of my very, when I first started my job, one of my very first cases was somebody who had all the hallmarks of a sovereign citizen, Republic of New Jersey, you know, I'm a free inhabited living man on the land, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, what the hell is this crap? And so... <laughs> 
as most of my audience could probably attest to, I mean, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be here watching if they didn't enjoy it. I went into the, oh, there goes, your, there goes your sign. That wasn't I went tape down the YouTube, <laughs> I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and watched, started watching all these compilations. Like, what the hell is going on with these people? And what fast? And then the moment I like decided, okay, let's look at Lexus. You know, it's a you know, it's a you know, as you and I know, it's a repository of le you know legal opinions. And wow, the moment you put in sovereign citizen in there, you get a lot, <laughs> a lot of hits back about people who have used these strategies. And from based on my research, I think the earliest strategy, uh, earliest moment I've seen them try to use this was like 1980. Okay. Um, before hmm. that, it was all. Uh, because my, based on my research, uh, they melted uh, or evolved from the old tax protester uh, movement. The 16th Amendment doesn't apply or it's in, uh, improper. Um, hmm. I feel like a lot of sovereign citizens, you know, they uh, evolved their ideology from the old tax protester movement, which is even older than that. So... Uh, the first time I ever saw a case where this person says, like, the laws, not just the tax laws, but all laws do not apply to me. It was, right. like, around 19, the early 1980s. Interesting. Uh, so, it is, so it, again, this is, a, this is a, a movement or this is a legal strategy that's been around for 40 years and people still use it to this day for whatever reason thinking that it's going to work. It, it, it's a failing, it's a failing legal strategy, <laughs> but, um, y yeah, it's in, I kind of, I'll tell the story on my show. So like I said, I had seen these guys in action and, you know, I started my show to promote my law firm and my law practice and just to make fun, video, interesting videos, inform people of the law. And, uh, I made a show on, I, I had, I had some feedback um from comments asking about sovereign citizens and i made a video um on sovereign citizens and i i entitled it you know sovereign citizen why it doesn't work and mm -hmm. i think that it someone posted it and i can see from my youtube analytics someone posted it in a reddit thread and mm -hmm. it went like baby viral like most of my videos were getting hits by like 30, 40, 50 hits, okay, people I know, I'm posting on Facebook, all of a sudden I got like a thousand hits on this video and I'm like, what is going on here? And that's when I started to dive, and I haven't gone as deep into the rabbit hole as you mm -hmm. have, um, but that's when I dove in. It's funny you say that about the legal opinion, and it's funny that they, that a lot of these sovereigns, you know, they don't, recog they don't recognize the government. Um, I've seen one in a YouTube video citing a Supreme Court case, and I'm mm -hmm. saying because they've written about them in the Supreme Court. Apparently, I'm like, well, you can't cite this court that's illegitimate to you <laughs> when making this argument. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a testament to contradictions, you know. When you know, uh, you know, this Supreme Court case says the laws don't apply to me, but why are you? Supreme but by virtue of citing it, you're invariably recognize it in the first place. So <laughs> exactly, 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 for sure. For and sure. there is actually one video uh, I recently watched uh, where the judge directly calls the individual out on that. You know, uh, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you know, it's very, you know, by trying to submit this to the court, submit this as evidence, you are invariably, you know, acknowledging my existence and jurisdiction or in the other. And again, in, in, in a separate context, you know, OK, you have this document from the secretary of state for New Mexico saying that you're the executor of this legal fiction. By virtue of you using this as, as a form of legitimacy, you are accepting the, the legitimacy of the secretary of state for the. State of New Mexico. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's always one of those hilarious yet frustrating aspects of the movement that uh, that I always get a kick out of. And I think that's, for me, that's why it's addicting to, to, to see some of this stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's a walking uh, contradiction. Um, 
you know, one of the things, and we talked a little bit about this before, Artrex, is, is it, it's, you know, as attorneys, and we're, we're, you know, we go to law school and we're learn, we learn to make these legal arguments. And then once you get into the practice, you know, you use maybe some of the arguments you've known. And it's always just sort of interesting to hear, you know, something new. And you hear these people, and the, the funny thing is, is there's like, there's like a little bit of logic to it, but at the end of the day, you know, when you get to the, the bottom of it, you know, you, you got like a, a major premise, a minor, pre, a minor premise, I, you know, in the syllogy, well, there's no major premise, ultimately, with the sovereign citizens. But, um, yeah, it, it, in, in a way, it, it's appealing to an attorney's mind, but it's also ridiculous, sort of, when you dig down into it. <laughs> Well, that, yeah, and that's the thing, like, I, I try, it can't be helped, and I think I think this is something that I talked about, is like, you can, you can get so very easily caught into the weeds, in a sense of, a lot of what I try to focus is, like, you know, a lot of them try to read cases, you know, read, uh, read uh, court cases out of context, they cherry pick a lot, they uh, misinterpret statutory language, but... What you can get caught into the weeds of is very is into the ID the like the the deep philosophical and ideological aspect of what they do and what they how they operate and I think in your video you kind of you kind of uh, tapped into that into natural law and you know uh, and one of the people uh, in my chat Luke mentioned is like the whole concept of the consent of the governed where oftentimes they take that in a very literal sense. Yes. Like, yes. I, you know, they, you know, mean consent of the government means I have to literally, as an individual, consent to each and every single law that's been passed in order for it to apply to me. That's kind okay. of their... that, that, that's not <laughs> right, right, right. That's... How do you how do you operate a society if it acts if you if you do something like that? And then, and and that's where you get into that sort of like. Um, ideological bent of, you know, society and how society operates, and you know how we uh, deal with aspects of law and you know order and enforcement and who has the power to enforce certain acts, and then you get into the idea of like, okay, you know, we have a system of government in place, and it. And it, once you go down that road, it, it gets way too deep into the weeds when at the end of the day, this, this jackass is trying to get out of a traffic ticket. Right, right, <laughs> right. It's you know? crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I actually thought about going into, and I don't know, what what was your undergrad? I uh, did po uh, political science uh, undergrad in, uh, at, uh, uh, in Texas. That, that's why we're interested in this. That's why we're, I was a political science undergrad too. And it's, so, you know, we read political philosophy, et cetera. And, you know, the whole- Montesquieu, de Tocqueville. Right. You know, yeah. Right, exactly. Some attorneys don't have that background. They might pick a little right. bit up in law school, but it's, yeah, the consent of the governed, the social, the social contract. contract. Well, they, which they also take literally. Right, which they take ex <laughs> just extremely literally, and it's and it's really yeah. You can get into the weeds with it, um, but you know it's also maybe a fun way to bring up those topics. You can talk about democracy, the history of democracy, the roots of democracy, the Federalist Papers. Mm -hmm. You know they like to. Some of them believe in the Constitution, some of them don't. I, I wish they'd do a little more reading on the theories behind the Constitution and, you know, the, the, the whole purpose of having a republic and representative government um, and, you know, the, the concept of, you know, the social or the social contract that the government mm -hmm. uh, is is through a democracy, in a sense, has the consent of the governed. And that would that's what kind of frustrates me also watching some of their arguments like I did, I, wa I did a video on uh, this guy who um, was caught with a little bit of marijuana and charged with marijuana possession and resisting arrest. And, you know, he's the, the, the marijuana, this is my property, this is my property, etc., etc. Okay, it's your property, it's a legal property. If you have a problem with the marijuana laws, okay, go out there and get the laws changed. Vote for legislators who will change that law, pro peacefully protest, 
uh, there's a hundred things you can do to try to get the laws changed and the laws do get changed. Um, but you know, these guys, they don't want to do any of that. They just, they want to no. use it to, to get out, like you said, get out of a crime or something. Right. No. And, that, and that's one aspect that, that people ha uh, tend to do. And, and again, it is something that I, that I've often said, um, more than one occasion is that my whole bent is not necessarily that I'm defending the efficacy of these laws. You know, that's not what I, I'm, I'm here for. I, most of the time, I'll agree with them that some of these laws are asinine, and I'll, I, I, ideologically, I probably disagree with them. The whole point is that the state, through our precedent, through our evolution of our laws, they, for better or worse, they have the authority to pass these laws, and through our system of government, that means even if I disagree with them, I can be punished if I don't follow them. It's it's uh, it's it's uh, the, the 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 what we have uh, agreed to be the best uh, form of government compared to all the rest. It, and yeah. just simply saying I can ignore them because I don't agree with them doesn't really fly because then again then anybody could make that argument. Right, and then you I mean I, I in a sense they're anarchists. In a sense they're just anarchists. Um, but there, I, I, you know, I watch them like your, your, their argument, your argument would make a lot more sense if you were protesting a king. And like you said, it makes sense. And I didn't know that the movement grew out of tax protesters, but that, that makes complete sense to me. I mean, if you're, if you're uh, objecting to a dictatorship or a monarchy, you got a little bit more ground to stand on. Um, but, you know, you want consent. A democracy is about as consensual as a government's going to get. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and again, uh, again, you, that's going into the, to the weeds a bit. And especially with the case that you were referring to, because uh, uh, that's the part of that free keen movement, because they're like very anarcho libertarians like very hardcore anarchist type of uh situation which again the thing is like they the whole point was that a lot of them moved to that small town ended up giving that town a whole lunch whole bunch of hell because they'd done a whole lot of that crap if you if you've seen any of their other videos um where apparently it's instead of running for council and modifying their parking ordinances and the laws that way they just decide i'm just going to do my own thing and then try to make a claim in court thinking that it's going to work um you know the judge i remember the judge in that case that you were you were referring to the judge says look man uh, the the legislature and it's uh and it's good wisdom decided to make this substance you know unlawful to possess and i as a judge i am obligated to uh, uh, adhere to the laws that have been passed by the legislature, which is, which they in turn are, you know, uh, 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 voted in to office by the general populace. You don't like it, work to work to either elect yourself there or vote for somebody who agrees with your ideology. And in fact, in New Hampshire, there is actually, I think he's the only sovereign citizen I know of who is actually a member of the New Hampshire legislature. I don't know if you've seen him yet, but he's, he's, it's amazing to see that in, in practice. He, he was the subject of one of the videos that I did, the most recent oh, video. Okay. I didn't real well, I clicked on that. That was from Free Keen. I did the video. I looked on Free Keen. I clicked on that video and I saw him and, and I was like, this guy, why, you know, he won the election. Someone actually posted in my comments, I guess their electoral system for state representatives is a little, it's based on percentages in certain districts. And he said that this guy got, you know, the whole district goes Republican and they put in like four Republicans. And so he mm -hmm. would just be the last one. And so basically he's winning like an unopposed uh, sort of election. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't know that about Free Keen, that they're forming this little anarcho sovereign citizen state yeah, they, up there. Yeah, they've been giving the, this particular town a whole bunch of hell. Oh, and God. I actually kind of feel bad for him. But that's neither here nor there. Sure. Um, so, one specific aspect, and a lot that my audience has been well aware of, is the Moorish. Um, 
sect of, of this whole movement. Um, and for me, as I consider them kind of the most unhinged of the group because it's not not just the whole ideological nonsense is they have a complete revisionist history of how the world operates like yeah it's it's kind of like man i've been trying to figure out the how they operate for a long time and even i don't know if i can get it fully straight but they <laughs> they have this entire revisionist idea that the moorish people which the again which they consider black mm -hmm. you know they it's instead of race they identify you're either moorish or asiatic which means that you're uh uh a, a individual color who hasn't identified as a moor or you're an albion or you're or so-called european or white Okay. And that's a and that's a whole nother thing because there's a there are elements of black nationalism dipped mixed in with this. Okay. They okay. believe that they that their nationality had was actually had a pan global empire at some point. They don't really tell you when this happened or when it fell, but at some point it existed. So any Native American uh, tribe, um, any and all African ethnicities, or and all of them, they were all actually Moors. They basically co-opt a whole bunch of different ethnicities as Moors. Okay. And so that's why they actually have different names for regions in the United States. So, so they, have their, they have their own map? I actually saw a makeshift map. And it was okay. kind of fucking nuts. They call they called North America a Mexim or something like that. Okay. It's it. I it. All right. <laughs> the long story short is that they they believe that they were here first, and by here I mean the North American continent. Okay. In other words, the colonists. They allowed them to settle here. They allowed them to form their own colonies here. And they allowed the, uh, uh, the United States to secede and to form their own system of government through their permission. And so therefore they say that because of that, they still have higher political standing than all of the Europeans that are here today, thereby justifying the reason why they don't have to follow the laws. And through there, then they go through the usual sovereign citizen ideology of the UCC statements and so on and so forth. Okay. But their under the underlying reason why they don't think the laws apply to them is this insane revisionist history thing that they have going. <laughs> Man, I it, that's why I'm saying that they are the most batshit crazy out of all of the sovereign citizen ideologies because they because of their whole underlying reason for it, why they say what they say. It seems like the other ones just have like one or two hinge points in history that they change. There's a little bit of conspiracy, yeah. Yeah, to fit their narrative, but what you're telling me about the Moors is it just it's like a whole global transformational type oh, yeah. of art like fictional history you know they, they, they often you know uh mix you know egyptian uh um egyptian uh, uh arabic and african um and even jewish like uh iconography and religious aspects and they just uh, um they just throw it into a pot and stir it, and then they create this entire uh, ideology. <laughs> it's nuts. It's well, it's fucking nuts. Uh, and <laughs> one of the bigger, uh, most, and to go what we were talking about as far as like you know, in sovereignty, is one of the biggest players in this in the the Moorish aspect is an individual named uh, Taj Tariq Bay, and he's one of the most 
infamous of the the group, and he has a base in like Philadelphia. He, I think, he's pretty sure he lives in the Philadelphia area. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but the thing is, is that he's also one of the gurus. In other words, he has, I believe, he has a, a a website, RV Bay Productions, and that's where he, he sells a lot of the crap. He sells the packets uh. on announcing your status, your 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 ID cards. So he. he and so, if you find him on YouTube, he's a, a, he's considered a, a, a de facto leader of of this this kind of sect. Gotcha. And then you have uh, somebody who I discussed uh, or discovered a week uh, a week or two weeks ago, um, Sharon uh, Gail Bay, who oh man, he, so. <laughs> I dissected one of her videos, and in it, on top of the, on top of the, uh, the 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 psychotic revisionist history, uh, I you also deal with somebody who clearly plays uh, into the black nationalist um, sect uh, to the point where she's full on. It's full on racism. Hmm. She considered them the the Moors are the uh, idea the the. Racially and politically superior group in the United States, mm. and that anybody who's not not more, aka Albion, have to register as an immigrant or will be kicked out of the country. <laughs> Again, she's fucking nuts. Let me but, ask you something, Artrex. Is is there an <laughs> overlap? Uh, is there overlap between the Black Israelites and the sovereign citizens and the yes. Moors? And There's I, a bit. And I say this before you answer, because I used to visit my friend in Philadelphia. And, um, you know, Pittsburgh's a big city, but Philly's bigger. Philly's pretty, a lot bigger, okay? And I was downtown, and I saw just a massive... I, I wasn't sure what it was at the time. I think it was like a like the black Israelites. They were just set up. Like, they had these tables, and they had, like, speaker phones, and all of these, like, pictures hanging, and they're handing out pamphlets. So I'm like, what's going on? So I just wondered if there was some overlap there because you said it's Philadelphia. There, there is. Um, I wouldn't say all Moors uh, go go full on with the uh, uh, black uh, Hebrew Isra Israelites, mm -hmm. but I've seen well, at least with Sharon, uh, this Sharon Gale uh, uh, Bay. Mm -hmm. She does. There is a lot of overlap. Yeah. Um, because from what I understand, the the black Hebrew leaders was like our hardcore like racism uh, and and nationalism type aspects of it. Yeah. Um, but there is a mix there. But oftentimes, like they use coded language, like you know, if you know, whenever, whenever in courtrooms, whenever they uh, say they demand the judge to say, hey, "What's your nationality?" They're effectively saying, "Identify your race," because they say the only people who can judge them are other Moors, uh, in other words, other black uh, uh, black people. Okay. So. Um, so that is a one aspect, but yes, there is a little bit of an overlap between those two groups. Why don't when we discussed on the phone, you said I think, and I think my viewers would be really interested in this. Um, you broke down the sovereign citizenship uh, movement into sort of. You said there were three group, three sort of groups. Um, and why don't you explain that for the viewers? I, I found that interesting. Well, there was, I personally in in my you know, research of or research and, and following of this of this moment, I've I kind of like identified three distinct groups, and the thing is, sometimes uh, each individual can overlap, uh, what uh, you know, two or even all three of them at the same time, and that would be you have you have the um, the the Marx, the con artists, and the true believers. Uh, the true believers are exactly what you know they say they are. They are the ones who wholeheartedly believe exact exactly what they're advocating. They believe exactly what they're saying about the laws do not apply to them. And then and you see that when they go in case, court case after court case after court case, no matter how many times they lose, they double down, triple down, uh, fully believing you know the nonsense that they're saying. You have, and then you have the gurus. You have the gurus who, through one aspect or another, you can kind of tell that they don't actually buy into this. 
However, they still sell the packets of uh, you know just file these uh, paperwork that I created, uh, and you'll you'll get uh, you'll get out of your mortgage or you'll get out of uh, out of your traffic ticket. Basically, they're in it for the buck. Uh, uh, you know, they're uh, just trying to make a, a, a buck scamming people. Why selling these these packets to the uh, to individuals? And then you finally have the marks. You have the people who you could tell that they don't believe in what they're saying, or they might believe a little bit what they're saying, but it's kind of obvious that they that they bought a packet online, or they're basically going off of what somebody else told them because that person told them that hey if you if you try this strategy you'll be able to get out of your situation and uh you know that in that respect in those groups i have at least a little bit of sympathy for because sometimes many of those many marks are people who are in desperate situations there are people who are indeed seeing you know facing either serious jail time or who are, you know, about to lose their home, or who, you know, have, like, you know, inadvertently built up a lot of text tech, or who are in the middle of a really, really bad custody battle. Because sure. a lot of aspects I do see in family court, too. Yeah. And, yeah. and a lot of the marks, you know, or a lot of the uh, gurus take advantage of that. Uh, so you have those three groups, and every once in a while you can see whether somebody is one or a mixture of all three. Uh at the same time. So that's how I've, I've evolved and how I've seen it. Uh, uh, I've been able to kind of, kind of group these, uh, uh, group the movement into, uh, together in that respect. And, and let me ask you, because there's, you know, uh, there's, there's sort of like, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. There's sort of larger groups and then sort of groups within groups. It's all loosely associated. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen, I mean, would you say that these threads exist, the true believers, gurus, and the marks throughout all of the groups? So, like, you see them in, you know, the Moorish sovereign citizens, but you also see them in, you know, the, what, like, the 1781 sovereign citizens. Mm -hmm. Like, are, is that present across the board? I would say, um, if, you, if what you're asking is whether there's uh, like actual collaboration between the two, I don't see that a lot, um, especially in the Moorish uh, ideology. I see that they're very, very insular um, versus uh, sometimes in the other groups, uh, you know, between the very hyper-religious and the you know, non-religious but conspiratorial, a lot of them do overlap. Most of the time, I don't see a lot of collaboration between gurus or even true you know in that respect mm -hmm. sometimes i'll see some collaboration and even and even some competition between gurus like no no my legal bullshit is better than your <laughs> legal bullshit <laughs> and i've seen uh, a few of those too and i've seen a few of those as well uh, um but uh uh <laughs> So in the, I've seen a little bit of that, but not a whole. Because, but as you said, they're very. It's it's a loose affiliation. They'll talk to each other. Right. They'll swap ideas on on forums, but I wouldn't say that there's an actual like group, like a like right. a, a, a centralized group. I, but I, I do see it's going international. I wonder. It's going international. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it, oh, it's not going. It has been international. It's been, I've read yeah. that there it, there's some in England and Canada. I mean, I don't. Oh know. yeah. Uh, they, I mean, they're they're their entire they they're called free men on the land is their their title. They don't they, they don't associate with sovereign citizens, but they're free men. They're called free men on the land, and that's a lot of them are the all the Commonwealth countries. So Canada, England, Ireland, Australia, okay, uh, New Zealand, okay, um, and even and this is actually something recent. A couple of months ago, I I found out that um, Germany has their own <laughs> yeah I, I would imagine most countries have some play on it you know i mean it does seem to be out of the anglo-saxon american common, but it's common law uh, they come out okay. of the common law type of thing but germany as far as i know it's like a bit of a civil it's been like a uh operate on the, the civil uh uh law but no they they yeah. They're called uh, uh, Reichs, uh, Reichsburgers. Uh, <laughs> they, they, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, 
and that's one of those fascinating things is that you know they you could tell that they got the roots from sovereign citizens because okay. they they replace american documents that they cite with like german documents so uh you know instead of uh i don't know the 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 it, I can't remember. Instead of like the Articles of Confederation, they talk about the Weimar Republic. I got it. You know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you it. You know that that's sort, of the, that's sort of insanity uh, type of thing. They they just swap out. I get it. So in England, in England, you know, instead of uh, the Constitution, it's the Magna Carta gotcha. or the English Bill of Rights. You know, so right. Uh, so that's something you'd notice. Right. Like you could just go back to like the last revolution in France and say. This the newest government is illegitimate oh, yeah. for A B C D. You, you yeah. Know. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what would you say are so you identified the Moorish? Um, do you, I mean, do you think there's a way to identify the other the other sovereign citizens, break them into larger groups just for just for, you know, understanding purposes? I mean, the other group, I feel like the Moors are the most distinctive. That's why they're right. easy to easy to notice because, again, the moment they talk about their revisionist history, you can easily identify, you know, where they're coming from. Um, the other groups out there, most of the time, it's really it, uh, it's it, they're kind of the same. However, you can tell one is more religious than the other. So, um, because it, the the other groups will still kind of use the same aspects. They'll they'll cite to, you know, the Articles of Confederation or the 1933 bankruptcy or you know when we got off the gold standard. I uh, you know, I'll, you know you'll see a lot of similarities in that respect in in you know what they cite to as the, the reason why this current government is illegitimate. Right, right. And they'll, but one will say like you know. Uh, they'll go from a very, very, very religious angle in justifying, you know, why they don't follow the laws. Like I only follow God's law. You know, they'll 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 heavily cite the Bible and biblical canon to justify their as uh, uh, their basis for not following secular institutions. Got it. Whereas others, others, they don't necessarily do that. Um, they just focus purely on the conspiratorial stuff about the bankruptcy of 1933, or the or the very ideology uh, ideological aspect where you know the only form of government they they accept is the Constitution, bar none. Not even not even the Bill of Rights. Just whatever the hell was passed without amendments. That's all they follow, that's or it. the Articles of Confederation for some some insane reason. Do you think? that is there so the, so that to me looks like you you know it's again just a way to conceptualize you have um you know the sovereign citizen movement overall you got the, the moorish group maybe the more secular group and then the more religious group and it sounds like the the more the religious and the secular ones i mean we're talking about white people generally correct yeah, I mean, uh, there are very uh, uh, there are very few instances where I've seen um, Hispanic uh, individuals try to try this BS. Okay. Um, yeah. Or or um, other ethnicities. I've only seen one, and again, I, I'm only basing it off of her surname. One um, Asian woman in in Pennsylvania oh. who tried tried this stuff. Um, but the vast majority of people who try this stuff out are the black Moorish group, or you know white, uh, uh, you know white individuals. Um, it's very rarely do I see other like uh, distinct et these yeah. attempt these do you ideas. Think, do you think there's a reg? Is it regional when it comes to the religious and the secular ones? Like, are the, the would the, you think the religious ones are more focused in? The more religious parts of the country, I'm just sort of. I would agree with that. I yeah. would agree with that. Yeah. I would say I would say you're you're more likely to see the religious ones in the central U.S., the Great Plains yeah. area, yeah, uh, versus um, the uh, the West Coast or the East Coast. Yeah, the East Coast ones that I've seen, I haven't really seen a lot of that language. They just stick to again subverting the Constitution or somehow subverting laws that were passed after the constitution etc cetera, etc cetera. um 
you know, I did read, I don't know if you saw, I was reading on Wikipedia and that even, you know, in, in the white groups too, there's been a bit of a racist history as far as the equal protection clause, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you know, that, that stuff's goofy. Um, and you just wonder how groups, groups mix, you know, you got sovereign citizens who mix with other, you know, uh, undesirable type groups and you know the whole thing is just is just messy well i that's uh, that's also something that you know you don't really see or see discussed a lot but it is something that you i have noticed is that a lot of them do have their roots in that and again i think they they began a lot of it did begin in the late 60s um a lot of tax protester events deal, uh, deal with the late 60s and a lot of those tax protesters cite not just the problems with the income tax amendment, but the 14th amendment. Right. right. And when you read into it, it's a lot of it goes back into white supremacist uh, ideologies where they're still, they're still pissed off a hundred years later, right. you know, that the civil war happened. And, and, and again, a lot of, a, a lot of them will cite oftentimes 1865, what Lincoln did or didn't do, or the eight, uh, um, 1871 act. So a lot of them do go follow, uh, go deep into that uh, situation. However, I would argue that most sovereign citizens, both white and black, don't have that sort of right supremacist bent. I would say that most of them aren't, with exceptions, obviously, most of them aren't racist. They just buy into the whole legal strategy that doesn't work. Right. E even some of what I w what I read, which was interesting, was that the you know the the Moorish movement you know, borrowed from, you know, the white movement, this and that. And, and in more modern times, it's, bu it's become detached from um, a lot of the old uh, racist roots, um, which are pretty uh, gross. Um, but, and then, and then, you know, but you're, I, and I think maybe we can get into this aspect here is you have individuals who, you brought it up in family law, right? The, just people who are desperate and they don't have the money to hire an attorney or they're just getting their clocks cleaned, losing their kids, losing their family. And then you're going to see a lot of individuals who are in jail facing prison. You know, they may have a life sentence. They may have close to life sentences facing just massive amounts of prison time. Um, you know, the, these people maybe, you know, it, it's sovereign citizenship or these ideas are like a, a a hail mary, a last anchor, something to give them hope, something them to give them a little bit of dignity. Uh, when it's true, the state is essentially taking away their life. No, I agree with that. Um, I agree in a lot of aspects of what I've seen in my in my experience is that a lot of them do pray, and a lot of the gurus prey on people's desperation, and. It does deal with people. It's not just somebody somebody who just wants to get out of a traffic ticket. A lot of times it is people who are at the verge of losing their house, who are at the verge of losing uh, their kids, um, and who believe that they have been screwed by the system, and they believe that they've been screwed by their own attorneys. And so they're finding trying to find another route, another option. Um, so in that respect, I've seen that. Um, happen more than on more than one occasion i bet i bet i was talking to a district attorney who actually uh, saw one of my videos and uh you know he's 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 done whole trials against them i may i may try to go watch one um in downtown pittsburgh uh and you know they one of their strategies is to just they just file paperwork is to just paper he was like they try to paper you to death like boom yeah. boom boom and it's like you know, play the rules, play the procedural card, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of sad to see those people. Um, you, the whole, and again, I'm new to this, uh, learning about this community, the whole, the whole mark and financial sort of scam aspect to it, I really had no idea about. I did not know about that until oh, yeah. you and I talked. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are people, you know, the, what the biggest things is, it's not, it's not just simply focused on um, legal documents to file in court, you know, to get them out of whatever situation they're in. 
a lot of them is like uh, what's called A for V, um, accepted for value, where you know the you uh, if you if you take your your electricity bill and uh, do a magical write a magical incantation on the bill saying I do not accept or forward this. And you got to uh, write it. I have to write, to write it with red ink on a forty-five degree angle. I shit you not. They do actually say that you have to do it exactly in this manner, oh my God. or else it's the, the 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 magic. It's not going to work. Just send it back to them, and then you know some secret. Uh, the treasury is going to end up putting the bill for you. <laughs> or, or, or you know, uh, oh, oh you know, we found the 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 secret sauce to your alleged legal fiction straw man that you know you have a secret uh, account uh, 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 where your account number is your social security number, and if you uh, oh you know you uh, tell the if you send this letter out to the treasury uh, saying that I want to withdraw from my account, you know, of a half million dollars. And then suddenly you you found yourself a, a whole bunch of cash. All you got to do is buy my four hundred dollar packet <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hey, just fill it out. Right. And then and then if they don't do it, then you sue their ass because you know they're doing it wrong. You, <laughs> you know, don't blame it on me. No refunds, but uh, it, it's not my fault. It's their fault that they're not giving you their money. It, you know, and that's it, that's one of uh, uh, of several different scams that you i've seen them um peddle um and that go and it goes beyond just the mere you know you know buy my court documents uh and i'll be able to get your kids back type of thing yeah it's that was an aspect i just was not aware of so listen and all you sovereign citizens watching you got two attorneys here let me tell you or if you're not a sovereign, but you're thinking about buying this stuff, your money is like your money is better. Go to LegalZoom. You don't have to hire an attorney. Okay, you, I know you don't have to hire an attorney. Go to LegalZoom. Go to the law library. Do it on your own. Don't buy this crap. Don't the I, they could be prosecuted possibly for the illegal practice of law. I would think many of them have, they and, have? and many okay. of them have. Yeah. Um, more than one occasion, uh, there is uh, what the hell is he called? I forget his name, but he operates the uh, what's it called? Baines or Barron's Law and and Forensic Science Team. He, he actually, yes, he adds in Forensic Science Team be because <laughs> reasons. And then also uh, Anthony Troy Williams, the Private Attorney General, who is currently, who I believe, is currently in prison right now, but still filing his paperwork. He made himself Attorney General. I'm the Attorney yes. General. Yes, okay. he he found a, a federal statute that talks about Private Attorney Generals, where it's used in a very very specific context. Ronnie Lee Davis, that's the name of the guy, the the, okay. the guy with the Baines Law, Barron's Law. Uh, uh, um, but he, he found this federal statute. He's like, oh, I'll just become my own goddamn attorney general, complete with a badge and handcuffs that he was arrested with. <laughs> and he was, uh, uh, I think he got 22 years of probation, um, where he was forbidden from calling himself a private attorney general because he was filing, uh, uh, for, uh, documents for foreclosure. Oh, uh, and he actually, there's a video of him, of him trying to present himself in the middle of court, uh, during a foreclosure hearing. Oh, and he man. just, the judge is like, kicked him out of the house, uh, kicked him out of yeah. the courtroom. Like, you're not an attorney. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Um, and he's also waiting. For, that's right. Uh, Dimmer also pointed out in the chat that he's also waiting federal trial right now as well. That's, um, uh, but then Ron, that's right. Ronnie Lee Davis is the is the other guy who is like bears law and forensic sci science in Florida. And look, man, I don't like to. I don't often try to do ad homs, but yeah, the dude wear the dude wears like really long like freaking hair. He kind of looks like a creeper, and that kind of matches what he was eventually arrested for was for false imprisonment, where oh. some some woman who bought into this thing went to his compound yes it's a compound uh, in florida and re he refused to allow her to leave uh, so uh, yeah so it was for false imprisonment or kidnapping that he was ended up uh, arrested for and is uh it's a jail time but but i think uh, while he was there he was also they also charged him with um 
uh, 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 the unlawful practice of law. Because again, this guy was going to the courtroom filing paperwork. Uh, so and so, and he's not the only one. I mean, those are the sure. two big ones uh, that that I know of who are, who are infamous on YouTube for getting in trouble for the unlawful practice of law because these guys are file. Uh, they're not just you know giving you know advice on YouTube. They're actually filing paperwork on these people's behalf. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's crazy. It's I again, I, I wasn't even aware of that. So it's just it's kind of blowing me away that the, the, the scam, the scam part of this. Um, you you mentioned too what we had discussed um, that they have a certain opinion or theory about lawyers, right? They <laughs> that lawyers are part of a secret cabal yeah. or something. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, so, okay, get ready for this, if you, ha, if you've never heard any of this at all, uh, I just want to know, <laughs> have you heard any of, any of their ideas at all on this? No, no, I haven't. Okay, so, the first thing is, they think the bar in Bar Association is an acronym. <laughs> okay. Any, can you guess any idea what, what, what the acronym would, would be? BAR. Let's see. B, they think that BAR stands B is B-A-R. It's an acronym for something. Bad Attorneys Reek. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> British Accredited Registry. Okay. All right. Interesting. This is... They, uh, often, so I've heard multiple different formulations of the theory, but one that I recall... Is that the moment that you and I became attorneys, we lost our U.S. citizenship, and we are actually members and servants of the Crown of England. Really? Oh. Largely because Esquire, the our usage of Esquire, is considered a title of nobility, and according to the original Thirteenth Amendment. Anybody who has a title of nobility are immediately stripped of their citizenship in the United States. Okay. Are we citizens of Great Britain then? I mean, do we have... That's, I've asked them that for clarification. <laughs> I haven't really gotten a straight answer on that yet. And are we part of the royal family? I mean, I want some perks. That's all I'm saying. Some of that, yeah, I, I'm like, <laughs> where's my, you know, land in uh, Yorkshire? Okay. <laughs> right, but right, right. You know, I'm, I apparently missed this bit in law school where they warned me, like, make, make sure if, you know, I just want to let you guys know as one else, if you want to be attorneys, know that you're going to lose your citizenship uh, the moment you get your, uh, moment you're sworn in. Wait, don't you remember that after we, <laughs> after we passed the bar, when they took us into that back room through the curtains <laughs> and the queen was there yes, with the yes, prince. Yes, dude, he apparently a, well, we swore our oath to the queen yes. and not to the constitution when yes. we, when we uh, swore our oath of office. So, and also on top of that, they often do the whole thing about licensure. Okay. Oftentimes they'll say, oh, oh, oh that's right. Um, our uh, practice as attorneys uh, we are actually not, our licenses are not governed, been, governed by our respective states. They are actually governed by the private organization called the Bar Association. Okay, and I guess in other, that's... In, in other words, in other words uh, you can only be an attorney uh, through your membership of uh, this private organization. Therefore, um, it's illegitimate because of it being a private institution. Even though I've told these guys on more than one occasion that I am not a member of the American Bar Association, the New Jersey Bar Association, or the New York Bar Association, those are entirely voluntary yeah. organizations. Yeah. And I tell them my license is governed by the state of New Jersey or yes. the state of New York. That's correct. The judiciary. Most of them don't buy that bullshit. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, my and question. Dimmer, 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 Dimmer points out the case, the case where they claim they're they're that they're right, is called uh, uh, Schwer versus New Mexico Board of Bar Examiners. I gotta look at. I gotta read that ca that case. The long and short of it was is that the court. It's a Supreme Court case where the court basically said that uh, the Bar Association of New Mexico cannot forbid this guy 
uh, from uh, getting a license um, for bad character solely by virtue of his membership with the Communist Party. Okay. Okay. The problem is, is that they they and this is uh, this is a practice that they did. They cherry pick one line. Right. Right. A half sentence where it says. Where the court says the practice of law cannot be licensed by uh, this state or any other state. Right. And right. then they ended right there. Yep. Even yep. though the rest of the sentence talks about uh, uh, through arbitrary means. They say that they says that the state can uh, uh, control the, 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 uh, the licensure via merit, a.k.a. passing the bar exam, mm. and also moral character and fitness. But... Virtue of the com uh, uh, membership of the Communist Party cannot, in and of itself, be uh, uh, an aspect of poor moral character. That's what the court said. Right. But part and parcel to the uh, to the to the sovereign citizens is they love to cherry pick and selectively quote uh, court cases. Here and there, and that is just one perfect example of that. And the truth of I mean, if you read enough court cases, you could put together, you know, a little crossword puzzle. It, it will say whatever you want. If you cherry pick enough court cases, you can put together and you can say whatever you want. But let's be fair. Actual attorneys do this stuff too. Actual attorneys, oh, they, they do do that. But the problem <laughs> is, they get called out on it. Yes, uh, yes. just as much as other people do. Um, I mean, I've seen courts uh, uh, call out attorneys that you know uh, the the uh, absolutely uh, the, the, you know the opposing counsel sides X Y and Z. Yeah. However, it's an opposite because that case actually said this you know yeah. A B C. And and let's so, let's give a little legal knowledge too. Is that is that language in a case is, is can be considered dicta. And so it's mm -hmm. not necessarily, uh, it doesn't necessarily carry uh, the authority. Um, it's just basically the logical reasoning of the court. And what ultimately matters in a case, right, is the holding itself. So yes. what was the de actual decision? What was the actual holding? In a strange way, you can, you can sort of break a case down to one sentence, right? That's what we do in law school. This is the law. That, now, sometimes yeah. you can pull multiple laws out of a case but uh, at, at the end of the day sometimes 90 95 percent of the language in a case you need to read it to understand but it, it's not it's not law just because a, a court wrote it in a case right right i agree but but i think of the, one of the biggest and most common um aspects of what and i i can't i call it quote quote chaining because a lot of times that's what they do okay. they they, they chain them. together these to to kind of uh, direct down to the path of where they want to go and what in the biggest example i've seen that is the right to travel thing um and where they'll start with one supreme court case where the right to travel is a fundamental right uh uh you know that is so apparent that we need mm -hmm. not uh have to express it then they get the next uh, cool case that uh, fundamental rights cannot be uh, 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 abridged. You know they cannot be turned into a privilege. Uh, you know uh, and uh, uh, whatsoever. Then they go to another case. Any any fund you know any fund any law that uh, uh, that abuses a fundamental right can be ignored uh, and, uh, and without any any consequence whatsoever. And therefore, that means I have the, I have the right to drive without a license. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we see the the path that they 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 try they, that they take from yeah. one case to another without looking at the actual context of each case and what they're talking right. about. Right, and they try to connect them to get to their ultimate goal, which is, is I don't have goal? to have a license to drive a, a car. It, yeah, it, it it's almost just a big language game that they're playing. You know, it's just they play this really crazy language game um, to try to get to the conclusion that they want while ignoring the parts that they don't want. And no, that, yes. and that that was interesting. You told me about, you know, it has to be written on the angle. I was reading a little bit about how how uh, Nate like. 
things are written in all caps. That means the corporation wrote it in cap. Yeah. And and oh everybody, God. all human, everybody born in the country is like a little corporate entity created by them, uh, by the government. And, yes. and the, the language, when it's all caps, it's the actual corporation. I don't even know. I don't even know. Yes, that that is uh, a, a court. They, the courts have called it, uh, and that's again, that's another. That's part of that sort of uh, treasury account, you know, social security account scam. Okay. You no, know, like okay. the government has created um, a straw man uh, that's identified as your all capital letters type name, and that's where your account is held, and then you can access this account with all this money in there by, you know, again, you know. You know, waving a magic wand and you know over a spell and and doing the right language, and then you can get access to it. I honestly don't know the full origins of where the whole idea of that we're in all caps framing of somebody's name has automatically has legal significance in where it's uh, acknowledging somebody's freaking legal fiction, yeah. where it's a separate entity from you, your your individual person your individual ideal uh, identity right right however i've oh god and it, and it goes into something else that also pop up somebody also mentioned the obsession with using legal dictionaries as though they're law i've seen i don't that. know i don't know about you but very rarely have i cited black's law dictionary mm. in many of my cases in my memorandums <laughs> i've seen it only very rarely cited in court cases and even then in many instances i've seen courts tend to use uh merriam webster uh yeah. when when uh when uh, i identifying a term that may or may not be ambiguous yes yeah rather than black's law dictionary same but experience. they often use most of the time, outdated. They often use a second edition from 1910, um, and they they cite to it and also treat it as if it's it's enforceable law. Like every state is bound by whatever Black's Law, law Dictionary defines a term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but part of where they come out this is they. I think one of the things that they often cite is um, oh, what the hell was it called? Capitus diminutio, which is an old, it's an old term. Again, I didn't know this until I started looking this up. It's a, it's an old phrase from Roman law from, again, ancient Rome. Don't ask me why it's in, uh, why it's in Black's Law Dictionary, but they often have a lot, a lot of archaic French yeah. uh, legal sure. terms and a lot of English. But uh, Capitus diminutio was an old reference to where in Roman law, Roman culture, uh, an individual can lose their status as a, as an individual a person. Uh, yeah. They can lose their, they become, they, they can become second class citizens, like literal second class citizens or third class citizens. And they'll say, and what, and what one of the terms in there is capitus diminutio maxima, which means somebody who has lost, basically they are only one step above a slave in Roman culture. Um, and so I, it's, I don't know if it's. <laughs> Let me gather my thoughts because it's so fucking stupid. I don't know whether that it's because capitus sounds similar to capital that that is where they cite when it comes to saying all capital letters means a fiction. <laughs> what? And all capital, all wow. capital letters of somebody's name means that they're a legal fiction. Is that they cite this capitus de minutio maxima? And I don't see the connection except for the idea that capitus sounds similar to capital, as in capital letters. <laughs> that is it. I, I have no I other idea why they would make that connection <laughs> with the two. It's it's nuts. It's fucking nuts. Again. <sighs> It's a hell. Uh, of, it's a hell of a leap of logic. Let's say that. That is a. That is a. a I'm going to say that they were refer referring to the postal. Yeah, there is another. Oh, oh God. I just forgot about something, and I, you know, I may have to retract my statement in terms of uh, citing the Moors as the the most insane group. Okay. It may be actually this be this one guy, uh, called David Wynn Miller. Okay. 
Okay. This guy, who also claims to be the king of Hawaii, among other things, on December 21st, 2012, uh, which happened to be the, the, the end date, end times date for the Mayan calendar, uh, reopened the federal, po well, it's called the Federal Postal Court, which he claims uh, Benjamin Franklin created, but then was disbanded in 1776. I don't even know if that's fucking true, but suffice to say he recreated it. <laughs> but part and parcel to that, he created his own court, and he also considered him the Supreme Court Justice of this of this of this court. That must be nice. But he operates... He created a, a new form of the, of the English grammar. You gotta be kidding me. I can't, I can't, I can't even describe it without fucking it up because it's so... He got, he's got his own language. he got his own language. It's all, it's all capital letters and it's <laughs> the idea is that the the any usage of adverbs or or ending ending sentences with certain participles would eventually nullify contracts or it, it's called them it's called parse syntax grammar you know what I think it's better if I if I fucking show it to you because oh, yeah. I, I it's hard it's hard to describe this. This insanity. It's hurting my head. <laughs> I, I told people that, you know, if I was going to start doing some of these breakdowns and, you know, these courtroom breakdowns, yeah. I could never do David Wynn Miller because there's just so much insanity that I don't think... <laughs> I, I you could only go you could only go three three minutes of one of his videos would end up being a thirty minute video for me as a breakdown. I gotcha. I gotcha. It's, it's too that, much. That level of insanity. It's too much. That's hilarious. It's uh yeah the again there's like that element of magic. There's like this element like magical words, magical documents. You know, yes. this is secret passwords. It's, I'm actually surprised there's not more of, I mean, I want to compare it to uh, like the Freemasons. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I'm almost surprised there's not a little bit more of like that magical uh, aspect to a lot of the theories. It seems like the Moors maybe have more stuff going on. One thing I wanted to say with the Moors is, you know, their their argument is interesting. That's actually, their argument is actually the argument that the Native Americans maybe rightfully have, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Like Native Americans were here. Um, you know, we could talk about, like, slavery, too. So uh, the, the place that they come from, um, I actually kind of get, uh, but more so with Native Americans. And I, I remember a case in law school I, I could be totally butchering this case, but it's my understanding that the Native Americans went into the American courts uh, shortly after the revolution and um, were making arguments like this, like the fact, like arguing that the United States government doesn't have authority and jurisdiction over them. They were here first, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I think Chief Justice Marshall was basically like, look, I'm an official of the United States government. I have to recognize it. And uh, that's it. End of story, which isn't satisfying in any any way, logical or not. Um, but it, it feels to me like the so the sovereign citizens uh, make make similar arguments to that. Um, yeah. But the whole uh, language thing, I mean, they got their own language, I guess. Oh, yeah. Well. Uh, I'm sharing my screen right now. I don't know if All you right. can see it. Yeah, I can. On there. Yep. So this uh, Leighton Ward is. Um, I think he's one of the. I think he's like the the uh, the co-founder of this federal postal court. I think he's their. He was their so-called treasurer or or um, uh, or uh, a secretary, and he got in trouble because he tried to uh, apparently. Um, his mother's uh, house got foreclosed on. Um, a couple 
uh, in Arizona bought the house, and he then proceeded to harass this couple oh, no. uh, with filing liens and paperwork and you know the usual sovereign citizen spiel. Right, right. And what this what what this is is a audio recording that he made uh, between him and the attorney for the family in that case. I saw that. You, okay, you seen it? The, so, I didn't watch the whole video. I watched a couple minutes of it. There's nobody else on the online. Yeah, right. A real lawyer. I can't hear the audio. Can you hear it? Oh, oh, damn it! Oh, that's right. It's because of how Google operates. That's my. Oh, that's my bad. I forgot. That's all right. Uh, that's right. I forgot. You, you, uh, the my audience can hear it, but you can't hear it. Yeah, but I can't hear it. I'm not picking it up. Ward is an acolyte of this sort of quantum syntax grammar language, and the thing is, like I said, if you have access to Lexus, I highly, I highly recommend you. Um, look him up because sometimes they'll have the, the actual documents that they file and you'll see the craziness that, 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 that goes into these things. Cause again, it's, uh, it's, it's fucking nuts. And, and hit, Miller himself is also fucking nuts. I'm right. pretty sure though he's uh, passed on. I think he died in 2017 or something mm. like that. Interesting. Not with Danny, but interesting. Yeah. Uh, so if you ever, and that's the thing, uh, one of the paperwork that I got, like a lot of the times he uses the, the colon name dash, uh, grammatical uh, way in terms of how they write their names. Again, this is all part of the magic incantation, the magic language. Um, I saw that in some of the filings that I've gotten that I've seen. So that's another tell that you've seen that you could tell when somebody's kind of buying into this ideology, but he's the originator of that crap. Right. Uh, right. So, it, it's, yeah. So it, it's so. Yeah. It's 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 either a cult, it's either a cult or very cult like, and it sounds to me like even certain enclaves have formed into cults. I mean, you told me about this guy who has a compound. Yes. <laughs> like to me, that's that's like a marker of a cult is if you have if if you have a compound or there's a compound involved. Um, a lot of. Yeah, I think a lot of them really dig. Uh, uh, oftentimes, when they, even when they're shot down in court, they just kind of double down, right? Right. The ideology, and they just kind of dip further and further, and further. And, um, and and their ideology reinforces. Well, oh, so I lost in court. Well, I only lost in court because the system is rigged against us. It's not blah blah blah. You know, they have an answer to everything, right? And that's probably how they 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 help they suck people in. And how it lives on. I mean, they got an answer for everything, just like uh, just like a lot of cult cult ideologies out there. Yeah, exactly. the The sad thing to me is that I'm, you know, I I'm sort of a, a, a small government type person. I'm not uh, a big fan of an overarching uh, federal government, and. Uh, you know, I support small uh, small government in a lot of situations, not all of them, libertarianism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these guys kind of give, uh, you know, I, I think they detract from real, you know, legitimate small government type uh, political movements or whatnot. Um, and so it's kind of sad in that sense because, again, I sympathize with some of them. And like we talked at the beginning, I may agree, you know, this individual who was being prosecuted for holding a small amount of marijuana, like, I agree that that's BS. Like, I think marijuana should be legalized in all 50 states. I mean, that's my mm -hmm. opinion. It's just it's not. I believe that it should be. Um, you, you know, work to change the laws, work to do things. Don't just don't just flaunt, you, you know, in the face of the law, period. Um, right. And 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 again, in many aspects, and I agree with you that they do kind of do a disservice to what they ultimately believe. 
um, and they ultimately hurt you know their own ideas and their own causes that they want to that they want to advocate. But uh, because oftentimes, <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> there's there there. I mean, what? Uh, Nothing else garners more sympathy for law enforcement than seeing some guy acting like a jackass in the middle of a traffic stop and giving the officer a freaking hard time for no other reason other than to think that you're uh, an attorney and trying to le legislate your case um, and being an aggressive individual like you're nothing but a public servant, you know, ba basically being a disrespectful asshole. Right. And then, yeah, everybody's going to be rooting for the cop to just smash the window in and and uh, uh, and and. Slamming to the ground because everybody would get started to get pissed off and annoyed by your self-serving attitude when you're acting like that and yep. acting like the laws don't apply to you when here I am I gotta end up getting a ticket and I'm the one who's still got I gotta go I gotta deal with this shit whereas this asshole wants to just play games and and give everybody a hard time great point great point I think that's why a lot of this is so popular online I mean a lot of the videos that are out there of sovereign citizens um it's so popular. I think I think you just you touched on it right there. It's like you got this guy, you know, coming out saying the law the laws don't apply to me when ninety eight nine percent of the population is out there paying their taxes, working hard, and trying to follow the rules. I mean, and and you're gonna get out here and say, oh, they didn't sign a contract with me when I was I don't know, eighteen years old. I mean, it's 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 BS. Right. No, I agree. Crazy. Crazy. I can't see you on the screen. Do you still have me up, Artrexis? Uh, I think I still am uh, sharing. Hang on. There we go. Okay. It doesn't matter. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Do you want to go a little bit longer, a couple more topics, or we close this up? I think we can close it up. Uh, we, it's been, we've gone in for about an hour and a half, so um, we could can, we can definitely uh, continue the conversation uh, later um, at another time. So... Uh, and yeah, we could we could discuss more of the you know uh, other other gurus or or uh, inf more infamous gurus who have actually gotten their days in court. Um, specifically, uh, Winston Shrout, who is again another guy who peddled a tax avoidance scam, um, trying to file like ten ninety nine OIDs. Um, and then we have uh, Heather and Tucci Giraffe. That's her name. <laughs> who. <laughs> Who is also part of a? Okay, I didn't know these these kinds existed, but apparently they exist. There are actually hippie, like New Ager hippie sovereign citizens. I I didn't know that was a thing, but they're all about like the really weird hippie, like Earth Mother, like believing in your you know your 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 chi and you're believing in yourself. Yet they still operate under the bullshit illegal strategies that it's that's just as insane as anybody else. She uh, uh, any any but basically encouraged this guy to do the whole uh, 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 treasury direct account thing, and apparently it worked very briefly. And so he ended up getting a uh, uh, a deposit from USAA uh, for about a half million dollars. Um, that the thing is, he immediately transferred it to a different account, so it wouldn't be, so, you know, as soon as USAA figured out what the fuck did we just do, and tried to renege on it, and he ended up buying a freaking, uh, uh, RV, or, uh, uh, tried to buy an RV, uh, like a very high-end RV with it, got caught, and now he's, uh, they've been charged and sentenced as well. Um, and then, yeah, you'll get into people who... They're not necessarily, I wouldn't say that sovereign citizen ideology is necessarily their specific thing, but they're just complete conspiracy nutters right, in general. Right, right, So we're talking people who, you know, 9-11, Flat Earth, uh, you know, and everything in between, along with the whole sovereign citizen, 1933 bankruptcy, straw man, et cetera, et cetera thing. So, yeah, so they're... But yeah, the whole new ager hippie sovereign citizen thing was like a weird one for me because it, yeah, I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. Pick your, but anyway, <laughs> pick your flavor. Pick your flavor, right? It, it, you're you're it, a hippie. That is why 
it, it it spans the spectrum. Right. You're a hippie. Uh, here you go. You're a right winger. Here you go. You know, you're, yeah. who knows? <laughs> like, you're black. We got a group for you. Whatever you want to be, any type of sovereign exactly. citizen. Come on Basically, in. Basically, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, hey, it was a great talking to you. Um, uh, it was a great to, uh, discussion we have. I, I'm sure we could do that, definitely do this again. Um, but uh, everybody, go check out his channel. I will, I'll go ahead and let you go ahead and uh, make your plug uh, uh, so you can take, that, take care of that. Same thing. Uh, any, uh, well, check out my channel, Joe Palmetto Law Show. I'm going to post this video on my channel as well. So to my viewers, check out our Trexus Lives. Um, I'm going to put a link uh below um he's been on this sovereign citizen stuff a lot longer than i have i'm, I'm kind of new to it so as you can tell from this video just a fountain of knowledge a lot of good content uh check him out and everybody uh thanks for you know thanks for tuning in and watching my show check out my channel you like my stuff you know visit subscribe to both of us all right uh yeah Sounds good, man. Uh, likewise, everybody check him out. Um, and uh, guys, uh, feel free to like, subscribe the uh, uh, the channel. Um, I'm going to have more content uh, later on this week. And uh, we'll let you know ahead of time when, you know, Joe and I will be uh, talking again. And uh, we'll definitely try to, you know, bring a couple more people in if we can. And, you know, kind of get a more conversation going if you have questions for us or and so on. So, all right, guys, you guys have a good night. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks Take for care. having me. Thanks for having Take me. Take care, man. All right.